Hello and welcome back to another episode of the channel. Um, yeah, so some bad news. Uh, the key is going to have a new owner. So, originally when I bought this car, it was by accident. I was actually after a van. Uh, but funny story, the van I went to go and see, when I test drove it, was fine, turned it off. Uh, switched it back on again and then it just blew up essentially um, so I was scratching around to try and find another car I needed a car to pick up bits for the TT uh, things like wings, sills, um, carrying jacks and trolleys and that sort of thing so um, it was a good investment at the time um, and I never really looked into what a Kia Sorento was um, it, it just happened to be close to where I was um, when I was trying to buy the van so I went to look at it bought it didn't really look around it too much because i was in desperate need of a vehicle that day um so then i drove it from bradford then to manchester to pick up some parts um and it was a perfectly smooth ride uh, which surprised me really but then again it's a four by four so you're kind of expecting to be comfortable it had done 118,000 miles there thereabouts uh so at that point it was just literally going to be ferrying parts there wasn't really going to be an attachment to the vehicle it wasn't going to be um, anything i planned on keeping long term it was just a short term solution for um the inability to carry parts in an audi tt mark one um so i've owned the case rental now must be just under a year um and to be honest it's a fantastic vehicle um i mean it has a two and a half liter uh, diesel engine um and apart from the standard things that you that i now find that you get on the sorrento like the rusting but you tend to find that um with east asia vehicles whether it's a suzuki or whether it's a, i don't know a mitsubishi subaru that sort of thing that the bodywork tends to just fall apart from them especially the older vehicles but from a mechanical standpoint the engine gearboxes transmissions they always tend to be fairly solid and you can look at that through the whole Honda family and you can look at that now even through the Kia family. Um, I leave this parked up for two weeks at a time, um, especially with the cold weather that we've had. It starts first time all the time. I've done a couple of little modifications to it. I did have big plans for it, um, like getting the wings and the arches sorted. I'll do a little walk around to show you that. Um, and again, of course, the engine running as well. Um, but I didn't plan to sell it um, and as I'm part of the Kia Sorento Mark 1 owners group on Facebook you know try and get tips and ideas if there are any problems with it um, it's MLT is due on the 24th of February um, and the only thing it will fail on is the handbrake it doesn't work um, so it needs new discs shoes possibly a handbrake cable um, pads as well because again there's no point changing the discs if you're not going to if, if you're not going to change the pads as well as changing the shoes so all in all it was looking at sort of 600 pounds just for the parts um, and then of course finding the time to put it up do a root cause analysis on what's broke where and how so um, somebody had mentioned that they'd got a quote for um, a, a new engine um, on a status so I said oh you know you can buy a whole vehicle um, I gave them a price, didn't really think that somebody would really jump at it, but somebody else within the comments um, has since made an offer. Um, so at least I know it's going to somebody who appreciates the Mark 1 Sorento. Um, it will leave me space for another project vehicle. I don't know what that is yet because I've got so much to do on the Audi. But again, uh, I'll give you an update on the Audi TT um, possibly this week um, as to what's next for that. Again, okay, with the parking sensors, that sort of thing. Um, but in terms of the Sorento, it's a fantastic vehicle, but as I say, I've only done 400 miles in less than 12 months in it, um, and it's going to go to somebody who's going to get real value out of it, um, and their current Sorento's broken, so they're essentially just going to use this instead because they like the vehicle, so they pick it up tomorrow, um, so I'm not sure when this video airs, um, by the time we edit it and things like that, but, um, so that'll be Wednesday. Um, but I'm actually going to miss it. I'm really genuinely going to miss it. Um, it's a lot of fun to drive. It's very pokey for a big bulky thing. Uh, it's a nice driving position. It's very comfortable. 
Um, it's a little bit weird when you are trying to indicate when you've been driving um, a different car because obviously the indicators are on the wrong side. So you end up putting the washers on or flashing somebody when you're trying to put the washers on and so on and so forth. But again, those are things that you get around to. But yeah, I'll give you a little walk around anyway as to the little bits that I did do. Um, so as with most Sorrentos, it's suffered with a wear and tear because the interior is not, I don't, I don't really think it's actual leather leather. Um, but again, as you can see there, the wear on the steering wheel i did buy a new leather cover for it i got that off ebay i think it was like 14 pounds or something like that which you have to stitch on yourself um but again i just didn't get around to doing it and then i did manage to put a new gator in because again that's another problem with them is the gators tend to be a bit of a mess in these mark ones um there you see an example of what the handbrake one looks like i did find it difficult to find a replacement for that because i was looking for a chrome handle and um, but again I didn't get around to finishing it so I put a new gear knob on um, and the gator so that's all clear the seats were an absolute mess um, so was the inside of the car so I used a leather cleaner for that so as you can see it's a lot cleaner that head unit was already in there I did plan to change that to an Android one and put a reversing camera in there uh, but again just didn't get around to it as you can see a typical issues the arches standard problem with the keys um, and again cleaned at the back and the white pad residue you can see there is the uh, carpet cleaner so again you just powder it um, and then brush it it's for households but again because these carpets are grey they get very very messy and again, just needs a good hoovering out with an industrial hoover or something a bit more powerful, really. Um, of course, I did a refurb on the headlights. They almost look like new. Dechrome the front grille. Same with that headlight as well. Again, it needs a good wash, really. Um, but that's that. The boot space is absolutely massive. And again, it's a bit messy in here. Again, use the carpet cleaner um, brushed it try to hoover it brushed it again and um, got that fairly clean painted the tow bar up and that with some satin black straight use paint because it was a bit rusted but now that's black now so it looks a lot better also had to go at the window tints myself and again the underside there use the straight on black paint to help protect it I also cleaned up the engine bay mm, fair enough. oddly enough I could actually do with another wipe to be fair um, but again very clean no leaks so it's an absolutely solid engine And again, we'll have a look and see if it starts as per usual. Straight over. No lights, nothing. From the uh, very quirky aerial that rises. Always nice. So I seem to be losing daylight now, so um, yeah, and that's it for the Kia. Um, it's been a great vehicle to have, um, and I'm sure the new one will be happy with it. I'll keep you posted on any new projects that I'm going to pick up alongside the TT and a couple of bits that I'll be doing on the BMW. Um, but otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. See you soon.